How's it going everybody? You're gonna watch a video here in a minute of a tree care job site. A pretty bad day for these folks. I don't know a whole lot of details about the about the incident. I don't know the climber, but it appears that he's a contract climber working with a thrown together crew, zero PPE, terrible communication, all kinds of stuff wrong with the video if you watch the full length video on YouTube. But I wanted to pull the injury part out of it, the incident part out of it, show you all, and then we're gonna come back here and talk about a few things that we, I'm gonna say do most of the time, if not 99.9% .9 of the time, we do very well. But I just wanna reiterate, because we have a lot of new people, a lot of new hires that are gonna be rigging and lowering and using a porter wrap and rigging line for the first time. So I did this yesterday with a new person on a crew. It went great. He did fine, did some rigging of his own, and I just want to make sure that the same points are getting distributed, communicated throughout the company. So watch the video, and then you'll be right back here for one more minute of uh, tips and reminders, safety reminders about using a porter wrap and rigging on. Where's so how what about him? Fucking hands gotta be burnt to shit. Alright, so you just watched apparently some guy screaming in towards the porter rack porter wrap. Maybe he had it wrapped on his wrist, maybe he had the rope wrapped on his wrist, maybe he was just holding on to it too tight. But you saw how forcefully he came in, his hand stuck in there, impacted the tree, and it was enough to actually stop that piece from coming down, which I would imagine hurt. So, a few tips, a few takeaways from that. Well, hopefully everybody knows and hope if you're an experienced crew leader, you're telling your, your crewmen, your newbie ground persons, that after we have the porter wrap loaded properly with the proper amount of ropes communicated by the climber or bucket operator, we're going to get a good distance away from the tree or the porter wrap. I'm going to say at least 10 feet. What you don't want to be is right here, obviously because your hands could quickly get stuck in there and you're going to have some serious burns. So at least 10 feet away from the tree, if not further, uh, making sure the line is in a straight line, untangled behind you. As I said before, we're never going to wrap the rope around a wrist or hand. We're never going to wrap it around our waist. We're not going to do a one-handed bowling if you're a Boy Scout or anything like that. At most, I only ever want to see maybe someone just anchor the rope there on their hip to help pull something or hold, or hold something. For the most part, you're back here, you're clear. We want to be out of the drop zone. If you're looking straight up at the piece you're rigging, whether it's a top, a limb, or a log and it's going to be falling towards you terrible place to be all right i have seen pieces come out of the rigging i've seen the rope pop off dead logs i've seen the climber forget to put the rope through the block this guy you don't ever want to be looking up at what's falling uh, move around the tree or if you have to move the porter wrap in a different location or put a block on the bottom of the tree and then put the porter wrap somewhere else Get yourself away from the drop zone. 
those couple things right there are gonna save your life or in this gentleman's situation could have saved his hand. Good communication. If you don't know how many wraps to put on that porter wrap, stop and ask. Flag the guy down. Or dare I say, put an extra one on if you're not sure. There's times for that, there's not times for that. If it's a critical situation, the guy in the tree or the bucket absolutely needs to be sure what's going on on the ground. So always ask if you don't know. Proper communication. Staying out of the drop zone, all right? And good distance away from the tree, not wrapping the rope around a wrist or hand or arm, uh, is gonna save injuries, could possibly save somebody's life, could save the work day, uh, yeah. The other thing you saw in that video that I'll touch on real quick is emergency response. Nobody on that job site wanted to deal with that injury. The guy was writhing in pain on the ground and work just seemed to maybe go on like that happens all the time. Hopefully, if somebody is injured on one of our job sites, and we're gonna be talking a lot about this if you're a new hire because we're going through CPR and first, first aid training, uh, work stops. Climber comes down, bucket operator comes down, work stops, the injury gets dealt with, the emergency gets dealt with, and maybe down the road after that's over, we move on to the job. So, uh, I was really shocked to see the climber not come down out of the tree. Uh, maybe he did not have a quick means, a quick way to the ground. So hopefully you all noticed that. I don't need to say anything else, I already said it. Uh, stay safe while you're rigging and using a porter wrap crewmen or i'm sorry crew leaders keep a really good eye on your new staff and how they're rigging and new grounds person take these tips to heart and yeah stay safe while you're rigging